This video is sponsored by the JVOS Mindset. It's a new way of thinking of jujitsu. Click the link in the description and get your copy today. Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez. In today's video, I want to discuss how I learned jujitsu in a jujitsu academy. So, jujitsu academies over time have evolved in how they teach jujitsu. Back in the day in Brazil, jujitsu was taught on a one on one basis from instructor and student alone. They're, they didn't have group classes. There was no such thing as group classes. That way, the instructor could control the aggression and the, the, the way that they were attacking the student, which allowed the student to react accordingly, uh, react um, with the controlled speed, and the instructor can guide the student to improve their skills. Now, as jiu-jitsu blew up, especially in the early 90s, once the UFC occurred and everyone started to, jiu-jitsu had this high demand to be taught and people started to seek it out, group, group classes became a much more common thing. Well, back in the day, curriculums weren't really put into place. Remember, they were being taught on a one-on-one -on -one basis so that everyone was just kind of teaching random moves and, and hoping that the students would learn the moves because this was a different way of learning in the group classes. So I want to discuss how I learned Jiu Jitsu. I made another video about that going into the, the details of how I did that. I'm going to show you guys a chart in this video of, of, a, of, a, of a quick summary of what that video was about. And then I'm going to get into the application of how everything kind of went down when I was learning Jiu Jitsu back in the day. So a typical jiu-jitsu student experience, a student comes into the academy, a normal jiu-jitsu curriculum is being taught. That includes learning techniques in no particular order. The, the student then has to figure out what techniques work best for their style. They group techniques into categories. They figure out what to develop in their style. They piece together a complete game. They come up with a strategy and they hope for the best. So most of these things were a student's responsibility. They're the ones that had to figure all this stuff out. So in practice, this is the way that this looked. Typical Jiu-Jitsu Academy, even with the curriculum, looks like this. A student walks into the academy, they go into the curriculum machine, they start to taking the classes, and then they start learning techniques in no particular order. Now here's the caveat. It is our input that allows us to figure out which technique worked best for your style, we group techniques into categories. We figure out what to develop in our own style. We piece together a complete game. We establish our own game plan. And then finally, we hope for the best. So I was a college wrestler, so I had grappling experience in the past from, from the wrestling world. So I had a good idea of, of motion and movement and balance and, and, and control. And I was able to piece together a complete game rather quickly. I received my black belt in five and a half years. I won... Uh, lots and lots of tournaments when I was a blue belt, purple belt, and brown belt. And even at the black belt level, I was winning as well. So um, I wasn't your typical student, but there were so many friends and students along the way that stopped training jujitsu because it was too hard, it was too complicated. And I think part of the reason why was because, the, uh, because of the way that jujitsu was taught. It put a lot of responsibility into the student's hands and some people could handle it and some people couldn't. And um, I think that's one of the key factors which um, prevents students from continuing learning jujitsu. So what is the problem with this style of teaching? What is the problem with, with the way this, things are being taught in most jujitsu academies? Well, you're the problem. Now you are the problem. It puts too much responsibility on the student and it takes too long for improvement. We must take out the student's input and the student's responsibility must be minimized. They are here to learn jujitsu, not to figure out the key elements of jujitsu. So it's very important that those key elements are in the, in the hands of the, of the instructor and taking away the responsibility away from the student. Of course, your input along the line is gonna be, is gonna be important, but you wanna minimize that input based on previous knowledge from the instructor, what techniques work the best and from what positions um, these techniques work best from. 
So these key elements, figuring out which techniques work best for you, grouping techniques into categories, figuring out what to develop in your own style, piecing together a complete game, establishing your own game plan, those techniques are too much, or th th those concepts are too much for a new student. They don't know. So what we've done here is we've taken all of those things and we've put them into the machine, taking the responsibility away from the student. This takes the responsibility off the student and puts it on, in the hands of the instructor. So the way I run my Jiu Jitsu Academy is a little bit different. We've, we, we've kind of baked all that stuff into the cake and this is what I've come up with. New student walks into the academy and they enter the master plan machine. The, the name of my curriculum is called the master plan and an academy is a machine that produces a desired result. So I have three pieces of the plan. The first piece is the JVOS mindset. This is a mindset that teaches you how to think and it teaches you um, a different way to look at jujitsu rather than just strength, force, conditioning, things of that nature. Secondly, we've broken down the positions, the key positions into chapters. So each chapter is a particular position. And finally, within that chapter, we have a central path strategy. So each position, top and bottom, has it's broken up into a specific starting point, and from that starting point, each one of those positions has a plan that has a high success rate. So you're learning what works best first, and I call that the central path. So we have central path strategies in every chapter. Each chapter is positionally based, and then I give you a mindset that helps you think your way through an opponent's behavior. Well, this, this kind of teaching nets a desired result. So what are the desired results of my academy and the way I teach jiu-jitsu? Well, first of all, uh, the, the first thing that I like to mention is RSD, rapid skill development. So because I'm teaching you what works best first, you, you gain skills quickly. So you're able to work from these positions quickly. Once you understand the strategy, you're able to get better at the strategy over time, exposing yourself through what I call positional perspective. The longer you're in a position, the more de in depth you understand the position and, and the better you get at this central path strategy. Secondly, universal comfort, no matter where you are, top, bottom, doesn't matter, offense, defense, you have universal comfort. This brings down your anxiety and it increases your conditioning. High effectiveness, because we're learning what works best first, the effectiveness of each individual positional strategy, each central path from each position is high effect, highly effective. It's highly efficient because of the way we're fighting, because of the JOS, uh, JVOS mindset, we have a, an efficiency that is gained through the mind, through the relaxation, through the understanding of when and how to move. This creates a high efficiency and that efficiency is is throughout everything that we do every position that we cover and of course something that is vastly under mentioned or under trained is punch defense throughout so i have a, a, a specific punch defense strategy from each individual position which will save you from taking damage which helps your conditioning when you're not taking damage, which helps you stay calm and not be reactive, which helps your energy be more efficient and you're not spiking your energy and being reactive and chasing and trying to defend people's punches because everything is moving so quickly. We neutralize the opponent and that allows us to keep our conditioning even under the worst case scenarios, which is when an opponent is trying to hit us. So this is just a quick summary of the way I've structured my academy and the difference between my academy, the thought out nature of our curriculum and the high effectiveness and most importantly, the rapid skill development, which this program produces. Thank you guys for watching. Like and share this, this video. Comment. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I will talk to you guys real soon.